So I'm a massive fan in regards to attention to detail, CVPR I've added with Cyberpunk 2077 and today guys we check out 5 plus secrets you may have missed from the world of Cyberpunk Phantom Liberty. How's it going guys, my name's DPJ and if you do enjoy the video leaving a like really helps out and if you like what you see and want to see more, be sure to subscribe. So this video will contain spoilers at certain points so do keep that in mind. Okay, so as you play the early missions of the Phantom Liberty DLC, you soon meet Reed, where he gives you a little backstory of what he does and how he is basically a ghost agent and where he doesn't get paid for the job he does. He goes on to say he works doors a couple of times a week. Basically, the dude is a bouncer. Take a listen. Last night I heard, you're the manager. Ask Bob, he owes me a favor anyway. Yeah, well, tough nuts. You'd have to manage without me. Boss, man. I work the door at a club. Selection, you know, bouncing. Huh. That your Lilo gig? A bouncer? It pays bills and nets me a little disposable. Sleeper agents aren't entitled to government pay. Not even under the table. This is not how I imagine spending my day. Well, guys, you can actually locate him in game doing this very job. If you come to the city center within downtown and come to this club right here called the Multi de Guana Liquors, and while enter the building, you will find Reed doing his side job. Look, take a listen. Okay, so we're going to move on to Mr. Blue Eyes. So, Mr. Blue Eyes, where do we even start with this mysterious dude? To be honest here, there are way more questions than answers, and I'll probably leave you with even more. And I could theorise about this dude all day long. I mean, I actually remember people at one stage thinking this dude is Morgan Blackhand due to in-game files that link the two. But hey, that's a different story for a different video. But what I do know about this dude is, this dude has been seen a handful of times in the base game, which has led people to believe there's definitely something more going on with this dude. We do see him within the Don't Feel the Reaper secret ending, as well as a few times before, tied to these quests. But people, this dude has returned and added more mystery with Phantom Liberty. If you side with Songbird during the Firestarter mission, during a mission not long after called Killing Moon, where you are instructed to reach the rooftop elevator through the construction site, in the room just above you looking down, he can be seen. But by the time you get up there guys, this dude has vanished. You can see this on screen now. Also, if you haven't noticed, Songbird does mention him or references him about how she got her ticket to space. Here, take another All listen. Accounts, right? Not far off. One thing. Thing you forgot to tell me. Who got you this flight? Funny thing is, I don't know. Proxy showed up. A corpo every man for the ages. Expensive, understated suit, dark hair, blue eyes. He also <sighs> appears once again when you Still start the me? final train ride with uh... Sunbird. Off to the side of the control room where V and Songbird hold out while waiting for that train. So yeah, when CDPR said all secrets from the game haven't been found yet, they weren't kidding. I do believe this guy and why he is here has something more to offer. But that's just my opinion. Next up guys, we have the secret Panam interaction which ties in with Phantom Liberty. This I believe might only happen if you do romance Panam. I can't confirm otherwise though because every playthrough I've done, Panem is the one I've been romancing. Okay, so if you pick the ending where you get cured, you go into a coma for two years. When you wake, if you try and contact Panem, the call doesn't go through and you leave her a voice message. Now within the credits, you see Mitch telling you basically not to call her again. Although this isn't the Panem the game basically builds up, she really wouldn't stop fighting for V. But anyway, if you do visit Panam back at her camp before getting to any of the endings within the Phantom Liberty DLC, 
Bruce. If you speak to her, you actually talk about Myers and much more. Here, take a listen. Hi there, V. Listen, what if I told you the FIA approached me about a gig? The FIA? As in the NUSA's intelligence agency? No shit. This thing with the FIA. If it works out, there might be a cure in it for me. What? V, hey, that's incredible! Only, oh, what if it's just one of their games? They're sure to know how much you're willing to risk. It's a game, all right. Not about to let him turn me into their pawn, though. No worries, Pan Am. I'll manage. Was in Dogtown for a time. It's right next to Night City, but it's like a whole nother world. Dogtown, huh? huh? I think about it like a mistake, a regret. Nothing to do but wall it off. Forget about it. Wait until it withers and dies. Yeah, Night City half pretends that Dogtown doesn't exist. But nobody can convince me there's not some kind of fucked up symbiosis between them. Like a half aborted Vegas for corpos and gangoons. What happens in Dogtown stays in Dogtown. <laughs> Convenient. Guess you must have heard Space Force One crashed in Dogtown. There was talk, rumors, conspiracy theories. What of it? This FIA agent asked me for help. And now you're talking to the Choom who rescued the president of the NUSA. God damn! Truly, you've outdone yourself, V. <laughs> Secret agent. The one thing missing from your resume. Just as long as you know. Governments, heads of state, all that. Even if you think they owe you for some reason, it usually boils down to them having something on you. So stay vigilant, okay? You may have noticed that she does sound like she's on the phone. Weirdly enough, if you call her, you have the exact same interactions. I don't know whether CDPR are just being lazy here, or they made a mistake with the dialogue and the way it sounds, but hey ho. Next up guys is Songbird's last message to you. If you went with the option of saving Songbird during the Firestarter mission and completed the game this way, sending her to the stars, then there's a place you can go to on the map where you find her final message to you. Interestingly, this is the same alleyway you meet up with her before that Killing Moon mission. Here, take a listen. If you're watching this, you know how our story ended. I'm a smidge jealous, I'll admit. I'm scared, V. But I need to trust you, and I do. And if you're watching this, I was right too. So, I thank you.
So at the very start of the DLC, where you have to go and rescue Myers from a crash plane, it's called a hole in the sky, where you're instructed to go to the crane. Well actually guys, if you don't go to the crane and you let Myers die, you not only get a secret cutscene with Johnny Silverhand, but you also fail the DLC. So you just go about your business, not even knowing about the DLC story. It's wild. Check it out. Congrats, Dave. You just killed Rosalind Myers and fucked the NUSA. Pray we don't meet again, and I mean ever. Ah! Still with us? What the... What happened? Your presidential rescue op. Miserable failure. Honestly though, good fucking riddance. Uh -huh. Okay. So now what? Huh. We go on living. Start by finding us a drink. Okay, so we're going to move on to a few of my favorite Easter eggs added with this DLC. And first up, guys, we have the John Wick Easter egg. This ties directly in with the ending of John Wick 4 and what happens to Mr. Wick. So if you come to the stadium fast travel point right here, guys, follow the path I take, you see exactly what I mean. The little dialogue from Johnny 2. Check it out. Next up guys, we have another amazing easter egg to do with Keanu Reeves. This is the Matrix. So if you come to this point on the map guys, right near the Heavy Hearts Club in Dogtown and follow the path I take, a little scaling is needed, you will find guys a hidden room where two chairs can be found, a TV and that red and blue pills sitting at a table. Check it out. And lastly for today's video people, we have a Blade Easter Egg. Now I actually found this by accident, it was the music that drew me to this location. When I got here guys, I saw what looked to be a dude having a little boogie. So I started to light him up and the other dudes here, and then he started attacking me while invisible with his katana. When he started appearing, I noticed he looked very much like Wesley Snipes from Blade. Now upon me taking him down and looting his body, the mud he had on him confirmed my suspicions. Well there we have it guys, 5 plus secrets within Phantom Liberty that you may have missed. Guys if you enjoyed the video leaving a like really helps out, if you like what you see and want to see more be sure to subscribe and hopefully guys I will see you on that next one.